Hello. In this review, we'll be talking about the Indian surface-to-air missile system, Akash. Its development took quite some time, and it saw its first full-scale combat use in 2025, during the escalation of the conflict between India and Pakistan. It is considered the best purely Indian medium-range surface-to-air missile system. I'll briefly go over the history of its development, its capabilities, and the various Akash modifications. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It helps make our content better. Let's burn. The story of the Akash surface-to-air missile, like several other Indian missiles in the surface-to-air and air-to-air -air classes, began in 1983. That year, India launched a project called IGMDP, the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. In essence, this was a comprehensive program for developing guided missile systems. Two major projects related to today's topic were initiated that year. The first was the Trishul Project, a short-range surface-to-air missile designed to intercept aerial targets at low altitudes, with an effective range of about 9 to 10 kilometers. The second project was the Akash missile, a medium-range surface-to-air missile system intended to intercept targets at distances of around 25 kilometers and altitudes between 16 and 18 kilometers. Over time, the program expanded to include new projects under the oversight of India's state-owned defense company DRDO. While the Trishul project was eventually cancelled in 2008, Akash was successfully brought to operational readiness. Visually and in terms of layout, the Akash missile system shares many similarities with the Soviet CUB, also known as SA-6 Gainful System, and that's no coincidence. India had the CUB in service and wanted to develop a homegrown counterpart. Like the CUB, Akash was mounted on a tracked chassis, had three missiles on a rotating launch platform, and was designed for deployment on both mobile and stationary platforms. In previous videos covering Indian military equipment, I've talked about how important it is for India to reduce its dependency on imported components. Just for context, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, India was the world's largest importer of military equipment between 1993 and 2022. India accounted for 11% of all global arms imports during that period. Russia was the main supplier, peaking at 64% of India's imports and declining to about 45% by 2022. France accounted for 29%, and the United States for 11%. And I think I don't need to specify who overtook India as the world's top arms importer starting in 2022. India's heavy reliance on foreign suppliers led to many components being imported. The country lacked its own technologies, indigenous components, and adequate funding. As for the Akash missile system, the first prototype was completed only in 1990 and sent for testing the same year. Over the next seven years, trials and improvements continued, international companies were involved in the process, and in many ways, the development of the Akash mirrored the story of India's Tejas fighter jet, especially when international partners withdrew cooperation after India's 1998 nuclear tests. On top of that came funding problems, there were simply too many parallel defense projects at the time. As a result, the Akash program was put on hold for a while. It was revived in the early 2000s. At that stage, the main issues were related to guidance systems, electronic counter-countermeasures, and the ability to engage a single target with two missiles simultaneously, a capability that was seen as essential. Testing resumed in 2005, after the system had undergone upgrades. By 2006, only 16 test launches had been conducted, and the system was still far from operational deployment. For the launch platform, the base chassis used was the BMP-2 infantry fighting vehicle, but there was also an option to mount the system on a T-72 tank chassis. Tests were carried out on both configurations. During the same period, Israel was considered a potential partner. A version of the missile system intended for the Israeli Air Force was sent for trials in 2007. The system itself was sent to Israel in 2008 for further testing. With Israel's support, among others, India managed to bring the Akash missile system to operational readiness. In 2012, the Akash system was delivered to the Indian Air Force for testing, and in 2014 it was supplied to the Indian Army for the same purpose. As a result, the Indian Air Force officially adopted the Akash in 2014, and the Indian Army followed in 2015. Even before the basic version entered service, work on an improved variant had already begun back in 2010. I'll talk about all the current modifications in a dedicated section. 
Now, let's take a closer look at the basic version of Akash and its capabilities. A typical Akash surface-to-air missile battery usually includes up to four launchers, which can be mounted either on a BMP-2 track chassis, on an wheeled truck platform from Tata Advanced Systems, or deployed in a stationary configuration. The battery also includes the Rajendra radar, a command post, and transport loading vehicles. Each launcher carries three Akash missiles. The system is capable of intercepting aerial targets flying at altitudes of up to 18 kilometers and at distances of up to 25 kilometers. The missile is 5.8 meters long, with a diameter of 350 millimeters and a wingspan of 1.1 meters. Its total weight is 720 kilograms. During testing, it was even able to intercept a drone flying at an altitude of just 30 meters. The missile's nose houses a passive radar seeker. Behind it is a 55 kg high explosive fragmentation warhead, equipped with both contact and proximity fuses. The control module follows. Mid-body, the missile features X-shaped wings, and between them, four air intakes are positioned along the fuselage. The rear section contains a ramjet engine and a solid fuel booster. At the very end are aerodynamic fins and command receiver antennas, since the missile uses command guidance, which helps reduce the impact of jamming. The Rajendra radar, a 3D radar with a passive electronically scanned array, can simultaneously detect up to 64 targets flying between 30 meters and 18 kilometers in altitude, at ranges from 4 kilometers to 150 kilometers. It can track targets at up to 60 kilometers and engage up to four targets at a time, guiding two missiles per target, a total of up to eight missiles. Once a target is detected and tracked, a launch command is sent to the launcher. Up to two missiles can be launched at a single target. Upon launch, the booster ignites, accelerating the missile for approximately 4.5 seconds before handing over to the main ramjet engine. The missile can reach a maximum speed of Mach 2.5, about 3,062 km per hour. Throughout the flight, the missile receives continuous guidance commands. As it nears the target, the proximity fuse detonates the warhead, scattering fragments in a 20-meter radius. The Indian Air Force once ordered 1,000 Akash missiles, while the Indian Army ordered 2,000. Each Akash missile is estimated to cost around $500,000. Work on the Akash 1S variant began in 2010, with trials starting in 2019. The improvements focused primarily on the missile itself. An active radar seeker was added to improve target acquisition, while the missile retained command guidance during its mid-course flight. Electronic counter-countermeasures were significantly upgraded, a more powerful engine was installed, increasing the maximum engagement range to 30 km and the maximum altitude to 20 km. A new 60 kg high explosive fragmentation warhead was introduced, along with improved fuses. This version has been inducted into service and purchased by both the Indian Army and Air Force. The next version was named Akash Prime. It featured enhanced jamming resistance and a new active radar seeker, making the system operational under all weather conditions. While the range remained unchanged, Akash Prime was specifically developed to meet the requirements of the Indian military for high-altitude deployments. The first trials were conducted in 2021. The most advanced version currently in development is Akash NG, next generation, designed in part based on Israeli requirements. It is expected to intercept aerial targets at ranges of 70 to 80 kilometers. The missile has undergone a major structural redesign, resulting in a lighter airframe. The air intakes have been removed, the internals upgraded, and jamming resistance significantly improved. It is equipped with a dual-pulse solid rocket motor, which enables a maximum speed of Mach 3.5, approximately 4,280 kilometers per hour. In this version, the missiles are housed in sealed canister launchers, with six missiles per launcher, doubling the capacity compared to earlier versions. The main objective of Akash Ng is to intercept targets with low radar cross-sections, such as F-35 type fighter jets. While Israel itself doesn't plan to intercept F-35s, this example helps illustrate the intended target profile. The system is also designed to intercept cruise missiles and drones. Trials for this version began in 2021. In 2023, Barad Dynamics Limited supplied a new active radar seeker for the missile. Testing continued in 2024, and operational induction is expected in 2026. 
The Akash Next Generation system will also feature a new radar equipped with an active electronically scanned array. In 2022, a contract was signed to supply 15 Akash 1S batteries to Armenia for $720 million. The first battery was delivered at the end of 2024, and the second in summer 2025. Armenia became the first international customer of the Akash missile system. And that's the Akash surface-to-air missile system. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. That's all from me. Wishing you clear skies. See you next time. Bye.